We walked down the hall, Amicus muttering under his breath the whole time. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How would, would he have no the nerve? Arrogant Kemian ass. <laughs> you were just touching his ass with your dick. Ooh, not consensually, though. <laughs> as we make, doesn't count. As we make our way toward Amicus's room, I go over uh, what just happened in my head. It seemed that Pharaoh was making some kind of point about slavery, while at the same time t taking that strange interest in me. I'm curious as... I mean, the Kemians are pretty... They're, okay, so, like, he's definitely judging him on the, on the slavery bit. Yeah. But Egypt, though... <laughs> he not just, a great history Yeah, I was going to say, stuff. his representations, like, it's not... Yeah, they were all about that. On top of that, the obvious sexual tension between the two of them was really odd, especially the way that Amicus just stood there and let Nefero rub against him while he was clearly hard. Is that just how the aliens hit on each other, with all that bizarre macho aggression? <laughs> it's just normal, a normal greeting. If it is, then I don't like it, but it doesn't matter. I'm not here for that kind of stuff anyway. I like how we never really know about Marco's, like, orientation necessarily. Yeah. I just need to get home. But at the same time, there's a little spark of jealousy in my chest at the thought of Amicus being interested in Neferu. Ooh. Yeah, you never get a hint at a uh, at, Am at at Marco's sexuality. I mean, you get hints at it. It's just I just like they yeah. never, you know. It could just be like. I think the game extremely assumes that you are from a specific demographic, and that therefore <laughs> that is who Marco is. Yeah, most likely. I don't know why, but the way he treated me at the pool always seems like almost seemed like flirting itself. And then to immediately have eyes for Neferu. What a hoe. As we walk into Amicus's room, I can't help myself. So, is that the woven way of flirting? I ask it casually, trying to act like I don't mind. What? Definitely not. That jack that damned jackal was assuming quite a lot. I mean I feel myself blush. You were getting kind of hard while you were while you had him pinned against the wall. I I mean I'm not offended or anything. I'm just curious about the culture. If that's how you guys go about doing things here. Amicus sighs heavily. I suppose wolves have a reputation for being aggressive when it comes to courting a mate, but those days are long gone. The jackal was simply relying on dated stereotypes about dating. Dated, dare, dating, daring, dated, stereo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I adjust my robe a bit, the cold air of the room seeping through my still wet underwear. Not to pry too much, but are you gay? Nefaro seemed to imply that. Amicus freezes, staring at me. He doesn't seem to know what to tell me, like he's afraid of what my reaction might be. I remember then how stigmatized homosexuality is here. Homophobic slurs are used a lot in the films I've seen, including Tail Razor and Cock Licker. <laughs> All right, uh, less euphemistic that one. <laughs> well, the, the Tail Razor thing kind of makes me laugh only because, like, even if you were like a straight wolf, you still have to move that tail. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can have you can well, have. I, I, I mean, Tail Razor implies bottoming because of a logistical. Thing about where the tail is in the way of. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're like fucking doggy which, like, style. Which, like, for that matter, you know. like almost every single, pretty much all the slurs that we have about gay people are about bottoms too. Like, it's not like. Well, it, yeah, like like cocksucker is yeah. a unit. Like you know, straight people suck cock sometimes yeah. too. <laughs> There's no fucking no. They're like. <laughs> <laughs> Try to invent ones because, but they're all, but inevitably because of the way that we have we project heteronormative ideas even onto gay relationships where there's essentially like the guy and the girl idea. So like there's the, so like it's, the bottom gets a lot of of negativity thrown at them the same way that there's a lot of a lot of fucked up things thrown at women in relationships. So there's that that there's that hypocrisy where like it's like good to have sex as a guy but bad to have sex as a woman and so on and it's like yeah so like the same stigma is as applied to bottom so like i can't even make up slurs for tops like oh yeah you twink breaker like <laughs> <laughs> like it's like and they all sound like you're, you're hercules or something <laughs> but, twink like, destroyer yeah but like we don't have we don't have mean horrible things to say to the dominant in the relationship so like inevitably 
regardless of what Amicus's actual role is, the uh, the the terms used are like yeah, it's like you're 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 either you're you're either it's it's mouth on penis or or penis and butt. Like it's all it's it's always implying receiving. Well, like that's even if all that's all yeah, homophobic slurs in real life too. It, it is true. It is. It's really stupid. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, and if you're like, if you go to like jail or something and you're like, you were like a, like out in the world, like a, a, like straight quote, quote, a straight person. And you're like the one that fucks the other guy. Like, that's okay. That's not gay. But if you're the, if you're like the receiver in that situation, even if it's not by your own will or consent, like, oh, that, that's gay. That's gay. That was the specific problem that, uh even in, in Rome, where people always talk about how gay it was and so on, but they specifically had a stigma, even though it's an inevitable part of how these relationships work. Yeah, what if somebody they, has to be at there's the still There's still a stigma for the bottom compared to the top, in the same way that there's, like, weird, um, like, incomprehensible stigmas for, like, the women in relationships, and it's like, do y'all want to fuck or not? Because if you're going to stigmatize half of every interaction, I don't know what your goal is. <laughs> it is very, is very confusing. I don't understand how we got this way. Like cocksucker, like oh that's, like thank you, I'm very talented. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like growing up with all the straight media all the time too. But it's like, I never knew what to do with it emotionally because of the fact that like, I'm getting two conflicting pieces of information about relationships between male and women, which is that. Uh, anytime a woman has sex, it's bad and make, and reduces her value like she's, like, a car. Yeah. But also, Dri driven off the lot having already. sex is, like, literally the purpose of life, and you need to lose your V-card as fast as possible, and it's what makes you, like, worthy as a person and so on. Like, the, like the me media's presentation of, of, like, the goal of sex is so bizarre, while also devaluing it for women as if that's not like the basic logistics of the thing you're talking about. Well, with women, there's that whole like Madonna complex where it's like the, you know, like motherly and beautiful and like the provider of life, but also like slut and whore and yeah, hoe. Yeah, like, Madonna e whore. Exactly, yeah. It's, I don't know, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's really Like anyone stupid. who tries to use this kind of language will not get laid. We, so. we as a stupid, we as a people We need to phase all these people out stupid, and we need to by choosing not to fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> just no no sex until you can get your head on right. Just yeah. sl slap them on the wrist with a ruler. <laughs> I just I don't I don't know it's I don't know. Be, be thankful. Be thankful for it, what you were provided with. It's up there with you are like, very fortunate. It's like up there with the, like how in like the nineties in particular it was so popular to have like my wife jokes, like jokes about how much you hate your wife, and I'm like, You married her. What the fuck? What is the goal? Why did you like, why are you married if you hate each other so much? What is the point of any... Like, it made me... Th it, I grew up basically thinking that marriage was, like, suffering, basically. Married, because married... Because nobody with, ever talks about it in good terms. <laughs> married with Children, that show where he, like, hates his hot wife, even though she's really fucking hot. And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck's your problem? Yeah. Why don't you want to fuck your yeah. hot wife? Why don't you like Leela? Yeah, Leela. <laughs> hot Leela. She's hot in two shows, at least. <laughs> I mean, if you can get over the one eyeball thing, but... <laughs> I think she's hot. Is it still called blinking one? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> the blink wink complex. Well, well ask my one-eyed dog. <laughs> you will not get an answer. No, I didn't get no. one. You, mostly just sleeping. Then bursts of extreme energy. <laughs> and sneezing. <laughs> Burping. It's, we <laughs> it's weird because males seem to be pretty intimate with each other. Kissing and holding paws being common between close friends. However, there are lines that aren't crossed, and actually being gay was looked down upon, which is what Neferu accused Amicus of being. I quickly turned to reassure him. You know, it's it's fairly accepted thing on Earth these days, and I have no issue with it. If you are, you can tell me. It's not that accepted. I don't know about that, but you're being you're you're telling you can tell him that. I mean, maybe in comparison to here on Wolf yeah. Planet. I mean, you could just lie to the wolf. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ambicus goes on staring at me for a bit, uh, for a little while longer than sighs. I have a preference for males, yes. He winces right after saying that. Hey, it's fine. Like I said, it's pretty well accepted in a lot of places on Earth. I, he's narrowing it down now. Yeah, just a few, just some, some of them. <laughs> some pieces are falling out of that pie. <laughs> but it explains why you were getting hard in front of Nefero. I... Listen, it wasn't what I was intending when I first grabbed him. I was trying to defend you, 
Look at his face. <laughs> I, I see. Amicus blushes all over again. The wolf turns away and walks over to the sofa before slumping into it, leaning his face into a paw, looking frustrated. What's wrong? Well, that jackal for one, and I don't know. Are you disgusted with me now? Why would I be disgusted with you? I don't know. You must see past incidences with a different light, like the massages and the wrestling and the dance. I promise those are truly pet duties. I was only having a bit of fun with in the amphitheater, and I only did what the dance called for. I shake my head. I think you've been really good about not taking advantage of me at all. It's fine. Amicus looks at me, unsure. And you never have to do those things again if you don't want. I understand. I raise a hand up. Seriously, you're fine. Amicus looks away, looking relieved but still ashamed. I'm sorry, it's... It's just something that's followed me most of my life. I had an incident happen several years back. It has created a lot of rumors about me. The people aren't very interested in having a tail razor as an emperor. Amicus finally looks at me. So I try to keep it quiet, so that it might be forgotten. Though it mostly was until... Thought it mostly was until that Chemian mentioned it. Amicus growls. Anyway, I'm sorry. I suppose it was something I should have told you, considering how close quarters we've been living. The wolf looks so dejected, so sad. I decide that I should tell him. You know, I'm gay too. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Amicus, uh, your timing was incredible, because yeah. I'm like, uh, yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's coming up next. Amicus snaps his gaze back to me, eyes wide. What? I feel my face turning red. I'm the same. I like guys. Amicus squints at me like he can't believe what I just said. Are you making fun of me? What? No. I'm telling you so you don't feel bad about it. It's fine. Oh. That's quite the coincidence. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, thank you for telling me. That isn't easy to do. At least it isn't for me. I'm the same. This is basically designed to be a story about a closeted character. <laughs> I slowly walk over and sit on the sofa next to the wolf, feeling strangely awkward about our little coming out conversation. Wolf well, is so accepted on Earth, then why aren't you open about it? <laughs> he doesn't. He's not good at follow-up questions. I know, I know. He's not going to think about it. No. Amicus still looks a bit uncomfortable, but at least he doesn't look sad anymore. So, since we're talking about all this, what was Nefera saying about me? Helping you out with your dick. <laughs> Is that a pet duty too? <laughs> oh, oh goodness. Jump right to that, huh? Well, yes. Yes, it is. But again, I would never ask that of you. Does Alex do that? Amicus pulls a face. While I'd rather not think of my brother in such a situation, yes, he does. Okay, okay. What? Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> First of all, I don't know Alex's orientation either, but he's a fucking diplomat. You're making a diplomat <laughs> jack off. Jack you off. That's pretty fucked up. Hopefully, I don't know. I just feel kind of bad for Alex. He's, he's supposed to be like a dignified position. Yeah. And I don't even know if he... I don't, I don't get the impression that there's consent involved in that one. I don't think they have a relationship like me and us and Amicus do. I don't. Because so like, Cassius just, just seems so to, awful. It yeah. also raises this issue of like... Yeah, like this question of like... They don't want a tail razor for an emperor, but both... Yeah, but... Both uh, candidates for emperor have a male pet yes. that apparently does that. You think if you really so wanted raises to... raises so many questions. Also, I think back to Alex's moment of darkness, where he had that stern expression for a moment. Like, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Alex. <laughs> oh. It's, it's one of those things where it's like... Okay, like... like so everyone in the world's gonna see these royalty people, and they're, they're, I think they're, they're aware their pets are male. I mean, it's not as if, like, they... 
they're such a strange species they can't yeah. tell. We'll never figure out the anatomy of this thing that looks just like a wolf but has a cat head. So it would be very much implied that they picked that they did pick a male pet, right? Yeah. You think if you'd really want to just have like a huge uh, a beard, you know, as a person trying to run for like any political position, you just it would be very easy. You just pick a female pet. Yeah. You can keep a male pet in your closet, <laughs> but if you really were trying to hide it, you really wouldn't have just picked a boy pet. It raises a lot, and then they, and then dress them up as the woman for the heteronormative dance. Yeah, I, I have a hard perform. time believing that they it, could just be cool with all this. There's so and many be questions. Super anti-gay. I think it gets into the weird, confusing Roman stuff where they just stigmatize bottoms, basically. Like that's like those are the gay people, essentially. Yeah, all all the pretty boys. Poor um, who was it? Was like it? it's just implied that both wolves are tops, which makes them straight somehow. One of those. I want to say it was Socrates. One of them was like very famous for picking a bunch of cute little boys, but then also being very smelly. And I remember thinking, <laughs> that's unfortunate for those boys. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember which which one it was. But one of them was like also also he was kind of ripped. I think though because he's an he old man, but he was kind of ripped. And smelly and he... Yeah, ripped and smelly, and he liked very pretty boys, even though he had like an ugly face. <laughs> I don't know. That's 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 hard to search. Yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll find. I'll <laughs> someone someone that will like. know exactly what you mean because that's just how the comment section works. Oh, I just know a lot of people that like philosophy. I think it's I don't put a lot of stock in it, so I don't remember. Yeah. I just remember this story. I just remember yeah. who. Uh, I don't remember which one it was. A lot of the rants you do, like just they just leave the comment section in wreckage, and people put like. like I'm so sorry. People make these like multi paragraph responses so that you sorry. probably don't read. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and every once in a while I learn something. Yeah, <laughs> you've been in, in there sometimes. But I can't go back and like fix what I had said. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm actually smart in real life, guys. <laughs> I swear. I'm, I swear. I just need prep time. But what is that? Does that mean your brother's gay too? No. Well, not as far as I know. He doesn't have a preference for males. Isn't that what makes you a homosexual? I shrug. So I just give you a hand job or something? <laughs> I can tell that the lingua had no trouble translating that to Amicus <laughs> because he immediately <laughs> blushes again. I squirm, wondering why I'm asking so much about this topic. I'm curious, and I already know that I'm attracted to this wolf. I'd given up on denying it a while ago. Yes! It can involve a lot of things. I mean, if you want to do it, I have no objections, but it's your choice. Amicus sounds tentatively hopeful, and I realize that he actually wants it. It seems that every day I go further and further with this wolf. I laugh, partly in Amicus's expression, and partly because of the absurdity of this entire situation. How about if we win the dance trial, I'll think about it. I'm speaking without thinking. Amicus is quiet, then nods. Sounds fair. I try to think of something else to talk about, still shocked at what I just proposed. So what's the deal with Neferu? Why did he do all that stuff in the bath? Solid face palm. <laughs> Just perfect poise. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. It was very strange. Hmm. Do you think that's his way of furthering an alliance? Not if he has any common sense. I thought he was going to... I thought he was going to be friendly considering he knows I'm open to the alliance, unlike Cassius. I leaned back on the sofa, thinking, Hmm, maybe he was just feeling you out. Amicus smirks at that. You could say that. Anyway, I don't know how to feel about him. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of just telling him that I'm not interested in the Alliance unless they send someone that has more tact. Amicus glances at me. What do you think? A choice! There are choices in this game. Well, I don't want to reject him. <laughs> I mean, I want to talk with him more. But it's Amic but specifically, what should Amicus do? Oh, fuck. He's asking advice, because Amicus was suggesting that he might ref refuse... Uh, he might suggest that he's, against, he's not going to further the alliance until they send somebody with more tact. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I, like, I zoned out for one hot second. We're being his consort. I mean, I do think... 
I don't know, man. I can't, I, I can't imagine just straight out not trying to talk with him more would be... I mean, that's not a very, uh... I mean, if, if, if he's trying to be emperor, I, I think that going the route of, like, trying to be civil is the correct thing to do. All right. Well, I think if he's the only guy you have to establish an alliance with, you should try to work with him. I mean, this could be your best chance if you're willing to put up with him. Hmm. Well, I feel like we might have led him into his arms, though. <laughs> and I didn't want that. And he seems to have the hots for you, so it's, that'll probably help you, honestly. <laughs> Maybe. But I don't know. I'm not a politician. But you are smart. Thanks. Anyway, I'm off to my shower. The wolf stands up and I do the same. Do you need help? Oh. Really? Yeah. I want to show him that things haven't changed, that I'm not scared of him now that I know his secret. He looked so he looked so devastated when he told me. And even if Amicus was the one to get that got me into this mess, I know now that he's a good person and doesn't deserve to feel like that. I mean, I've seen your junk already, so no surprises there, right? <laughs> I suppose not. If you're sure, I'm sure. I decide things for the wolf. Uh, to decide things for the wolf, I walk into the shower. <laughs> Amicus isn't far behind. Ooh. I dream a lot that. <laughs> <laughs> Made everyone's brain light up there for a second. <laughs> I never did that joke in the movie, in the video that I talked about doing the just friends freaking careless whisper gag. <laughs> I never made it into the edit. Uh, I dream a lot of that. I dream a lot the night before the first trial. I can't remember most of it, but. In the last bit, I'm in the throne room, surrounded by dozens of wolves who I assume... Who I assume they're the triumvirates. Kato sits on the throne, watching over us, his chin in a, on a fist. Meanwhile, Amicus is in the center, doing some type of break <laughs> dance. He's athletic and lying on his feet before throwing off his cape and doing a handstand. He still remembers the handstand. <laughs> that was a moment for it. Where Amicus did a handstand and then his loincloth fell down. Yeah. Uh, then he spins on his head for a while as the wolves around him cheer. He's on a, <laughs> imagining him on a piece of cardboard. <laughs> Spoonbox. Even Kato claps reluctantly. Meanwhile, Cassius has his paw in his mouth, realizing he's been beaten, his paper bones incapable of withstanding such incredible moves. <laughs> then I wake up. <laughs> I open my eyes to see the dark outline of the ceiling above me, the lights automatically coming on to a dim yellow glow. I hear Amicus's soft snoring next to me, and look over, seeing that he's flat on his back, mouth open and hugging one of the many pillows to his chest. I roll onto my back, feeling the anxiety of the upcoming trial return. After a while, I whisper up at the ceiling. Calm, what time is it? Calm whispers back. <laughs> Half past the first hour. So I have at least three hours left before I can get up and get ready. I close my eyes and try to get more sleep. It's hard, though, mainly because my future could be determined today. Amicus told me that we really only need to win this trial to win the whole thing. Because if we win tomorrow, that means that Cassius will at least have to partake in the combat trial, if not outright lose if we win the second trial. And according to Amicus, Cassius has absolutely no chance in Pugnu combat, and he knows that. While he might still participate in the second trial to save some face, he'd have to withdraw for the third, otherwise face outright humiliation. So if we win tomorrow, I'm almost guaranteed a way home. The thought of that of this whole fiasco could be over soon. Uh, the thought that this whole fiasco could be over soon mixed, uh, brings mixed feelings for me. While I'm going to go home when I get the chance, I can't help but feel a little sad at the idea of leaving Amicus and the palace. We're good friends at this point, and the thought that I might just get dropped off and never see him again. I sigh and listen to the wolf's rhythmic snores, the sound so soft and gentle that, rather than keeping me awake, it starts to lull me back to sleep. Oh no, he's torn between two worlds. I'm full of worry. <laughs> 
And again, I find myself floating as that wide, vacuous conscious that seems to bleed over the boundaries of any sort of individuality. I don't panic this time. I'm used to the feeling, knowing that it's just a dream, that it will pass. I also sense that other presence above me, even wider than I am. They've been following me around since I got on that ship. Knowing that someone else in there... Knowing that someone else is there calms me further, and I wait, wondering if they'll talk to me again. They do. I am still curious. I try to talk back this time, ask them what they're curious about exactly, but I don't even have a mouth to speak with. They seem to hear me, though, and in response, I sense gentle amusement mixed with... Fascination? Many, many things, but once again, I'm afraid I have to keep it short. I wait expectantly. Do you feel that Amicus would be capable of his duties as Emperor of Ad Astra? Boom. Uh, Two choices, back to back. Uh, it's hard, because I really don't <laughs> know what the fuck his job actually entails. <laughs> he's, he's, he's our lovable goof. He's a goof. And I think his ideas are good. I just don't know... Would I hire him for this job? <laughs> I, I don't know. He's a, he's a little foolhardy. Um, it's a tough question because it's like you wonder simultaneously wonder if he's competent, but there's also like that old like the trope about like the person that that uh that's like bad at this being the good person for it in certain ways, and it's like all the. There's not, there's not the thing that all the most trained politicians that are like raised and groomed for it and all that are like detestable people doing it for the wrong reasons that just reinforce the way that things already are and so on. But I don't know. I know I always say like any person who's a politician had to at one point decide that they wanted to be a politician. And that's a self-selecting and problem. <laughs> that yeah, that means you're probably a weirdo to begin with. Yeah. In this situation, he's born into it, so it's like I think he's it's not like the same where you're inherently yeah. devious if you decide to become a politician. I, I just feel well, yeah, because he's trying to live up to daddy, so it's like a different backstory essentially. But I always feel like if I ever was in Congress, like the room, I'd be like, this is a place of darkness. <laughs> this is just a place where a lot of horrible people meet every day. Yeah, it's like a. And by every day, I mean like you know like. A little bit sometime of the year and then they take vacation the rest of the year because fuck them it's like the dark crystal of the skeksis yeah, yeah exactly congress feels just like the fucking like skex the dark crystal room with the skeksis and they all fucking all suck decrepit their and old and like yeah <laughs> evil i'm gonna say i think we should say yes only because okay so he, our only options are him and cassius anyway yeah i think he'll do better than cassius I think Cassius is probably well spoken, but I don't think. I think he has. I mean, he has bad ideas, but I also think he's kind of a little bit of a wuss. I don't think he's. I think he's. I think. I don't know. I don't know. He's like more disciplined and driven. <sighs> Why well, he might do better? But he's also a huge douchebag, and he wants to cut off all of the children. I mean, but, but by better doesn't necessarily mean, like, it suits my ideals and what I would choose as far as, like, what they pick. It's just, are, would they be a functional, like, would they be able to... I mean, that's that's your that's also your own interpretation, whether or not that's what the question means. We're going to say yes. We're going to say yes. Ah, uh, how interesting. <laughs> the presence above me starts to dissipate, and so do I. That's the word you choose when you want to make the answer sound wrong no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> You're very interesting. <laughs> like a museum piece that I don't want to touch. <laughs> I'm standing awkwardly in the bathroom while another wolf moves busily around me, making short cl uh, clipped comments about my odd shape and tiny stature. He's the first wolf I've seen that isn't part of the Imperial family. So I'm trying. So I keep trying not to stare at him while he turns my, my head left and right, smudging a black substance on my face while he does. Meanwhile, Amicus stands behind us, his face showing a mixture of amusement and concern. I raise an eyebrow at him through the mirror, but he just shrugs in response. Do not move your face, please. I look straight ahead again, letting him smudge the black makeup on my face, still trying not to stare. He's hunched and droopy, wearing some kind of monocle with flashing lights. 
The lens sticks out every now and then, with a mechanical droning as he, sound as he examines his work. Also, I'm in a dress. There's no getting around it. It's a blue, tight-fitting gown that's covered in intricate gold designs. It's beautiful, no doubt, but it's not really... But I'm not really one for dresses, and I feel my face heating up with the embarrassment every time I look in the mirror. So instead, I focus on staring at the wall, or amicus. So why aren't you getting dressed up? Do not speak, please. Me? Well, I'm already dressed for the part of the Emperor. Amicus fans out his cape with both of us. With your leather pants. <laughs> I start to roll my eyes, but stop myself before the wolf can yell at me again. I realize that he's painting black stripes on my mm. face. <laughs> I got it. I was like, oh, you got you got to tiger fast. <laughs> well, I was also like, I also was like, elephant? I was like, that would yeah. be very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a lot harder to dress up as, as a tiger, as an elephant than a tiger. I was like, will she make the connection that, that tigers are from India? <laughs> yes. I did. I, did. I realized that he's painting black stripes on my face and it immediately reminds me of tiger stripes. After that's done, he does the same to the exposed parts of my arms. Remember not to touch or itch at your face. Also, keep your arms away from your body unless you want to ruin the fabric with powder. The wolf finally steps back, giving a snort of approval before turning and stuffing his equipment into his bag. Thank you. You're welcome. And with that, the old wolf hurries out of the bathroom, leaving the two of us alone and showing us why he didn't have a sprite. Bye forever. <laughs> I stand there a moment, staring at myself in the mirror, feeling like a circus attraction. I look... awful. Amicus coughs and steps up quickly, resting upon my shoulder. You look very good, actually. Very elegant. I look Horrid. up at the wolf and see him <laughs> smiling at me. I don't know if he's just trying to make me feel better, but then again, I suppose wolves don't really have any idea of what human beauty standards Dude, Alex are. Alex is gonna look so much better than us. <laughs> he's already a cat. He is already a cat. I look back. I look at the black stripes on my face. Are these tiger stripes? Amicus raises his, his eyebrows. Yes, actually, you have tigers on Earth. Yeah, is this like okay with them? Not offensive. <laughs> It looks like a joke. <laughs> they probably don't care if it's offensive because they're racist here. <laughs> offensive? Why would it be offensive? Oh, he doesn't even question it. No. We're honoring Mira with this dance. <clears throat> if you're sure. Like how they were honoring people with minstrel shows. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that was their exact intention back <laughs> then, but yes. Of course I'm sure. And you don't look like a joke. You look like a strong, beautiful Hindo tigress. Tigress? Tiger. I sigh again, <laughs> still awkwardly holding my arms away from the dress, feeling stiff. When does this all start? Well, for me, in about 20 minutes. But for you, another hour or so. All right. Anything I should expect before it starts? Not much. The Triumvirates will be watching through video link, so only Kato will be there to judge. Oh. Keep in mind that it will- this all feels extremely pandemic, even though I don't- I'm pretty sure it was done before that. <laughs> but it's so isolated and everyone's on, like, Zoom calls. Keep in mind that it will all be televised, live to the rest of Adastra, so... <laughs> oh gosh. Terrifying. Amicus sees the look on my face. Um... Maybe I shouldn't have told you that? All of Ad Astra. Live? Don't worry, no one will actually be there in person, it so doesn't help. just pretend, I guess. Why did you just tell me that? Well, I had planned on, wa on you watching the first half of the trial in the dining room. You'll know how everything is going in in uh, until your turn. I swallow hard. I didn't mean to keep that from you, I just thought you might know this would be the case. The entire moon pays very close attention to these trials. He's right. I guess I sort of did assume this would be the case. But now that it's actually happening, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Maybe I'll just get lucky and it'll happen when Mira dies during the dance. Listen, you'll be fine. We'll win this, and before you know it, I'll be Emperor and, your pro and our problems will be over. Again, the idea of having his way 
my way home all but guaranteed in the next hour. And it reminds me of the thoughts I'd had last night. So, uh, when I do get home, is that going to be the last time I'll see you? The corners of Amicus's mouth twitch down in a frown, but only for a moment before he smiles again. Well, I suppose that's up to you. With unlimited access to the stretch, I might be able to make visits every now and then. Would you like that? I don't even have to think about it. Yeah. Amicus's smile widens. That his biggest, dumbest smile. <laughs> I would as well. Yeah, I mean, you're my friend. I'd want to hear about the results of your empire. But then Amicus's smile falters, then turns into a frown. What? The wolf is quiet for a moment, then his ears flatten. I, uh, forgot the reason you're here in the first place. For a moment, I don't know what he's talking about. Then I do. We're not even supposed to know each other exists. The whole thing is against the law. Oh, so I guess we wouldn't be able to do that, huh? Amicus bites his lip, then shakes his head. We'll figure it out. But now is not the time for that. We have a trial to win. He's really good at continually just rejecting bad thoughts. <laughs> like the fact that he can't visit us if he drops us off because we're not supposed to know each other exists. Look, it's just like, anyway, not just, thinking about that. Head he re empty. He replaces it with that goofy, that one pose. Yeah. And that, that's the pose that erases the sad thoughts. Yeah, like that fixes anything. Yeah. <laughs> Amicus turns to me and with, after a little hesitation, pulls me into a quick side hug carefully avoiding the black powder on my arm. We'll talk more afterwards over a celebratory dinner, all right? The absolute confidence and reassurance in Amicus's voice calms me just a little, and I manage a small smile. I don't like overconfidence. It makes me scared. Yeah. All right. Good. And, uh... Little more celebration after that, if you get my meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget what you said. I had almost forgotten about <laughs> that. Amicus, if you want, if you want. Amicus chuckles before his ears perk up, his personal calm talking to him in a quiet, babbling sound. All right, that's my cue. Head to the dining room if you'd like to watch. Otherwise, calm. Will you tell him when to leave for the throne room, all right? I nod, and Amicus gives me one last pat on the shoulder before turning away. Um, good luck. I know you're going to do great. Amicus waves at me before walking out the door, leaving me alone to wait. I move to the bed and sit down, carefully resting my arms to the side, wishing they'd applied the makeup a little closer to the dance so I didn't have to walk around like a scarecrow. I wonder if it's supposed to work differently in fur or something. I was just wondering that, about yeah. like the makeup, this poor like wolf that did his makeup having to figure out how to deal with his yeah. gross oily like, <laughs> flesh, you know? I realize pretty quickly that sitting here in silence only makes me more nervous, so I slowly get up and make my way for the main hall. Next episode. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Thank you, convenient room transitions. <laughs> Thank you.